God. There is no earth without God. There is no love without God. Just lift your hands to Jesus. Can you just tell him, Lord, I love you. Say, Lord, I love you. Despite of my present circumstance, Lord, I love you. Despite the mountain in my front, Lord, I love you. Because I know by your name, every mountain will become plain. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. No me without 
loves you. There is no me without you. There is no Can I hear your voices? There is no me. Let your glory fill your house. Amen. Sit down. Amen. Hello, everyone. Welcome to church. This is Gateway International Church. My name is Bomo Georgina Amagbe, and I represent one of our teens' ministries, the Exceptional Teens Church. On behalf of our lead pastor and co-pastor, George Amanuela Izuwa, I welcome you to church. Remember, 2022 is our covenant year of sure mercies. The mercy of God will define you this year. It's still our family month as a commission. So, whether you're physically present at the headquarters or in any satellite church or connected online, you are our family and we love you specially. Now turn to your neighbor on the right and just whisper, you are family and I love you. Gateway International Church exists to help you genuinely encounter God. Every time we say thank you by testifying of God's goodness, he says take more by multiplying our results. Please go to the right foyer and share your story with the testimony department. Our social media platforms are meant to keep you continually connected to the grace in this house. Please subscribe, like, and share the information on all Gateway and George is on social media platforms. From either Play Store or Apple Store for more information and daily updates. Every church has its vision, mission, value, and culture. So today, let us remind ourselves again that when we say, I am Gateway, we are saying that we really want to see the Gateway vision fulfilled. There are four areas the lead pastor is asking for your monthly financial payments. One, partner with our church planting project. Two, partner with our daily radio ministry. Three, partner with our life center network. And four, partner with the George Izua Foundation. Free medicals and scholarships. 
For online partners, please call 070-250-0951. For on-site partners, please go to the Welcome Center Partnership Desk. It's time for Encounters with our Daily Devotional, The Parson. Hush, get away, shout hallelujah. Can you talk to your neighbor, say, welcome to second service. Tell your neighbor you are in for God encounter. Praise God. On behalf of our lead pastor and co-pastor, Pastor George Izumwa, Pastor George Amadele Izumwa, we welcome you to this service. I want to sit tight and get the best God has for you today. My name is Armstrong Emole Abai. I am a philosopher and a theologian by training. And in this great house, I am privileged to serve as the provost of Gateway Bible Institute and also work on that church plant. My assignment this morning is to take us on our Power Seed Devotion and our I Am Covenant Confession. Praise the Lord. Today is season 29, and the topic is Train up your child. And our key text is taken from Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Part of the society does not exist in isolation of the family. The family can be said to be one of the most basic and important socializing agents. The society does not exist in isolation of the family. The major cause of the degeneration of morality in our society can be located in the erosion cum lack of values in children of various families. You have a responsibility as a parent cum guardian to imbibe godly and goodly values into your children. Therefore, train up your child. What does it mean to train up your child? The following, number one, more their godly character and become the message you preach. Number two, training a child should be done in the direction of their skills and temperament. Number three, pay careful attention to their physical, spiritual, and emotional needs. And fourth and not the least, discipline a child when necessary. Can we make this prayer together? Can you lift up your hands and say with me, Father, today I receive the grace to imbibe godly values in the lives of my children and every child around me. My life and my entire generation will make Jesus proud in Jesus' mighty name. And then, action point, think about new things you want to teach your children this way. Tell your neighbor, think about new things you want to teach your children this week. Our daily Bible reading is from Job chapter 9 through chapter 12. All right. We frame our world by our confession. So it is time for our I Am Covenant confession. I see you. You're going to help us do this. Okay. Can you lift our hands and let's do it together at the count of three? One, two, three. I am Almighty God. My God is the I Am. He is everything I will ever need him to be. Gateway International Church is my spiritual family. 2022 is my covenant year of sure mercies. Goodness and mercy follow me at all times. Only good things are permitted in my life. My covenant place is at a topmost stop. In John 1 verse 12, the Bible declares that those who receive Jesus Christ become the children of God. Therefore, I confess Jesus is the Son of God, is my Savior and Lord. He died for me and rose from the dead. He's the way he is in me. His DNA powers my life for greatness. I love him. I believe in him. The rest of my life. Again, Matthew 6, 33. The Bible teaches that putting God first brings commanded blessing. And so today, I vow to put God first in everything. I walk in the covenant blessings of tithing, kingdom service, and soul winning. I am holy, healthy, happy, of favor unlimited, wealth and riches answer to me. Hours of darkness submit to me. 
I am free from sin, sicknesses, curses, poverty, barrenness, which or evil. The yours of delay and denial are broken over my life. Nothing good shall be withheld from me. In Psalm 84 verse 7, the Bible reveals that appearing before God empowers destiny. Therefore, as I appear before God on this mountain, I declare in agreement with my man of God, Pastor George Zuma, that I am is at work in my life. My sins are forgiven. My strength is renewed. I receive the blessing of God for a new level in life. Today, I lay my burdens and battles on the altar of God. No good things die in my hands. I will never be a victim of any form of wickedness. There shall be no loss or evil report. I am a beneficiary of God's mercy. Beat your chest and say that once again. I am a beneficiary of God's mercy. Let's put our hands together as we wake up the children for their presentation. God bless you. God way to live we trust the living God then hold on to his word and he'll show he is the Lord
what we say can my or make our governor provision so trust the living god then hold on to his word and he'll show up as the lord these things words these things words these things words these things words there's no Hallelujah. Is somebody grateful to see the last Sunday in the month of May? So we are not going to allow the stones to praise God because God has given us the voice to praise him and that is what we will always do all the time. So I want you to join us this morning and praise his name. you've done for me lost all my shackles and set me free robbed me and gave me the victory i got a reason a reason to praise i can't forget what my eyes have seen what seemed impossible i believe look at my life we got his story i got a reason a reason to praise cause i want
give him praise father we say thank you can i hear a power amen, amen. with your hands lifted say father. father let me hear your voice like thunder father, father. i thank you i thank you for your mercy for your mercy for your love for your love over my life over my life and today and today i receive i receive new mercy new mercy new love new love new blessings new blessings for the new week for the new open week. your mouth and talk Say to the king we Shaka give you praise our king Somebody shout amen. Amen. Can your amen be louder? Amen. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. He's the God in whom there's no shadow of turning. He's a God of mercy. The Bible said, the Lord God is a son and shield. He will give grace and he will give glory. And no good thing will he withhold from them that walk upright. Are you one of us? Yes, sir. No good thing shall be withheld from you. Amen. Lift your hand in the faith of God. Everywhere you are standing up on your feet. And let me ask a father. Father. You will not withhold. You will not withhold. Any good thing. Any good thing. My life, my life according to your word to therefore, now, therefore now i make a demand now make a demand of what you are believing for make a demand of what you are trusting make a demand on what you are believing for Somebody shout amen. amen. Lift your hand above your head and say, Any power of hell interested in my life, interested in my destiny, any agent of hell fighting against my life and my destiny, wherever you are, let the fire of God locate you now. Open your mouth and take authority. my word as that of somebody sent to you between now and Sunday you must have a financial breakthrough it is a week of financial breakthroughs strange opportunities of favor strange channels of increase lift your hand as I from everywhere from anywhere in the name of Jesus I call it financial According to the word that God sent to me, open your mouth and make a demand of the God that provided. Say, all through this week, I was really troubled. From Tuesday, I had this thing in my head about Satan trying to embarrass the church. And I thought it was gateway. 
Believe me, from Tuesday to Friday, I prayed only one prayer point seriously. Lord, whatever Satan is planning, whatever the embarrassment, whatever the scandal, whatever the crisis, wherever they are coming from, whoever is the witch behind, I prayed against witchcraft this week like I've not done in one year. Because I thought it was an attack of gateway. Because I kept hearing attack on the church, attack on the church in Port Harcourt. And I thought it was about gateway. I said, whatever they're cooking, whatever they're doing. I didn't know it was my friend. Listen, no matter what you hear, no matter what I say, you will say it's because it's your friend. But Pastor Chris is one of the most disciplined men I know. He doesn't leave anything to chance. What happened there is not lack of planning. What happened there is pure witchcraft. It's just the activity of the devil to put a dent on the image of the church. Never join any critic. Just pray. Pastor Chris will do well. The church will do well. Every one of the people involved, God will comfort their families. Please don't carry hatred. That 31 persons plus died coming to collect food in the name of a church is not something you forget. And I know the heart of this man. He's somebody who has a heart. There are people who don't have heart, who don't feel something. He has not stopped crying. I want you to grab your neighbor's hand. And I want you to please pray for the church. For King's Assembly, for Pastor Chris Hugo, for everyone that was involved in that tragedy, that God will comfort them. They will have a heart to forgive and they will have a heart to go on. Lift up your neighbors and then pray today. Let our God come and touch whatever. Let the hand of God step in there. Step in there. Step in there. Step in there. The church will do it. He said, church with a heart. With a reputation of integrity. Somebody shout amen. Amen. I said to him in the first service, I said one was praying about it. God just reminded me, said, do you remember that it was exactly the same time last year that somebody made a broadcast about it? Do you not know it was 20 something of May last year? The same date. So whatever is going on in May against the church in the city, I want you to grab your neighbor's hand. Lift it higher than your head. And I want you to shout fire. fire. You are not praying like you need it. Can I shout fire? fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every altar of witchcraft. Every, altar every of witchcraft. hand of darkness. Every occult power. Every mystery of hell. Against the church. In this land. Fire. Upon your mouth and cut drastic. Cut drastic. Cut drastic. This is the work so of we God. Not charging God out. Not hand of hand. We have lit the body of God. You may have Your name is the song of God. Lift your hand and thank him on Christ. So rock I stand. Oh Lord, the Lord.
if you are physically here and they call you Rosa and you started seeing some bumps coming out of your body like some instead like some rashes and it looks like bumps please can you come to the altar now if you are physically here if you are watching online let's uh, we'll pray for you where you are everybody just lift your hands there's a young man that started hearing the sound of crickets in his ear and after some time he started having some mental attack if you are here please can you come to the altar now God will clear your mind everybody lift your hand I speak over everyone here whatever the attack of the devil on your life let that yoke be broken Amen. There's a woman here. The Lord said to tell you, your womb will not be a burial ground. Amen. Two children, more than six months, all dead in your womb. And you are believing for a child. Please, if you are that woman, come to the altar. If you are in any location, go to your pastors there. Just lift your hand. Somebody here, something flew into your eye in the dream. And the physical, you started noticing you are losing your, vis your vision in that eye. Please, if you are there, come to the altar. Everybody just lift your hands. The Holy Ghost is here. If you are that one, come. If I mentioned your case specifically, then be on the altar. La korakati yanga dala gadi ya gobala gade ya kasha katala kabuseta. God says to tell somebody who lost a job, you will get it back in one week. Amen. Matalaga. There's a man here, you are 45 years, or you'll be 45 in August. But you're having a spine problem that is so bad, your spine is giving you hell. It's so bad, the pain is so much. Please, can you come to the altar now? Everybody just lift your hand. Let me hear you shout like thunder, my father. My father. Let me hear you, my father. My father. You are my healer. You are my, you are healer. my restorer. You are my restorer. Every hand of hell Every hand against of my life. the hand God said to somebody here I will restore your inner vision Amen. you used to hear God clearly before then it stopped from today it is restored Amen. from today it is restored Amen. from today it is restored Amen. everywhere you go this week ah, Kapola Please, do you believe God? I believe. Do you believe that God keeps his word? Yes, sir. And do you believe I'm speaking to you by him? Yes, sir. Then lift your hand. Everywhere you go this week, let there be financial breakthrough. Amen. Between now and Friday, Saturday, Sunday, no matter how bad he has been, no matter how long he has suffered, let money in millions enter your head. Let doors open to you. Let opportunities multiply to you. Let there be a testimony of a major breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. I had uh, one report, true or false. The almost every delegate that was in Abuja yesterday collected $50,000 to vote. Some collected more, but the minimum anybody had was $50,000. I was asking my wife, why didn't you go? 
So what kind of nonsense politics are you people doing? That when they're sharing, you sit down here. All of you here that have been shouting PDP, PDP, or Timpu PDP, and you didn't go to Abuja. Now see what happened. I speak over you from today. Anywhere that sharing into, you must be there. I don't know where APC is doing their own, but I anoint you now to go and be the one to collect it. Is that a pastor? Will they collect the, the ones that collected? Who did they vote for? Nonsense. This week will not pass. <laughs> Money in millions <laughs> must enter your hand. <coughs> How can they be sharing and you're not there to share? What nonsense are you doing? Praise the Lord. Well, even in a joke, you learn them a lesson. They don't learn the lesson I spoke about that God has not called you to be a watcher. You must be a partaker. Amen. Lift your hand high. Anywhere you are hearing me, by the power of Jesus, whose I am and whom I represent, the doors that we are closed open. Amen. The favor you lost be restored. Amen. The connections you need for your next level come to you. Amen. Wherever what you need is, let that place open to you. Receive! Father, this morning, speak to us. Thank you, Lord. Make a difference in our life. Amen. And every believer say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I have a brother and a friend, Dr. George Carlo from the United Reforms Church in London. Please help me honor him. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Uh, this morning we are still on our marriage intervention. Can you lift your right hand and say, I am gateway? I am gateway. My covenant place is at the topmost top. Only good things are permitted in my life. Can I hear your amen? amen. Is the God of show mercy showing up in your life? Okay. Uh, you know, when a family atmosphere is good, it becomes a fertile ground for every other good thing. Huh? When a family atmosphere is bad, it becomes a fertile ground for many bad things. Whether it's business, or raising children, or ministry, anything. I pray for you that your family atmosphere will be good. Amen. I can't hear your amen. Amen. When a woman is from a family that is smelling, every time she goes out, she'll be bitter. If your boss is doing you bad without you doing him anything, find out his home is not working. You are not hearing me. Something they buy time. I pray for you that your home will work well. When a pastor is suffering at the hand of his wife, he's pre preaching, he's always fire and brimstone. <laughs> You're not hearing me. <laughs> oh, your home will walk up. Yeah. But today, my focus is, is on raising up children in a down world. I didn't say raising up children. Raising up children. Are you with me? Children that are on top in a world that is down. Raising up children in a down world. You know, the world is very competitive. And you must prepare your children to compete. You're not hearing me. Have you noticed that there are some children who have this thing, they call failure to lunch. Even when they come out of school, they have no idea of what to do with their life. Are you with me? Psalm 101, Psalm, sorry, 10 verse 1 said, A wise son is the glory of the father a foolish son is the uh, the pain the sorrow of the mother i want to pray for you today that you raise positive children amen. i can't hear your amen. amen again the world is very corrupt and very corrupting so your early influence on your children is very important if you miss out on that early influence your ability to influence them as they get older becomes difficult. 
And that's why Proverbs 22 verse 6 tells us to train up a child in the way he should go. And that when he is old, he will not depart from it. So the early influence is very important. And that's what we're dealing with today. I said to them in the first service, there are no perfect parents. You will try your best, but you're not going to be perfect. And if you are trying to be a perfect parent, you will become a, you will over parent. And when you over parent, you micromanage everything about your children. You make all their decisions for them. You prevent them from having any trouble in their life. You got them here, got them here, got them here, got them here. Cut off every relationship that is going to give them challenge. That's over parenting. What is the result of that? When you are not there and you send them out into the real world, they have not built up defenses. They were analyzing why corona didn't kill us in Nigeria. And they say it's because we know malaria. You didn't hear me. You, did you hear me? Because we know Mr. Malaria. Corona was not a problem. Because Corona is a junior boy to malaria. And we have been dealing with malaria. Let Corona come. Is anybody hearing me here today? We've been dealing with a senior brother. Hello? So, everything that Corona does, is not what fever does. What is, what's the big deal? Is it because they gave it a new name? Are you hearing me? When we saw it in Nigeria, we said, come on, sit down. See how they're dying in America and Europe. You know why? We are, pro we are not immune from that. Have you noticed, brothers and sisters, that you know, when, uh, when my children were young, I always tried to say, okay, let's make sure that they don't drink uh, any bad water, anything. We did all of that and all that. One day, my mother-in-law, she's a microbiologist. She was the head of microbiology at University Teaching Hospital. And she said, said, that's nonsense. He said, what you are doing is going to cause your children to be more sick. The reason is because they're not building immunity. It's allow them to access some of these things. It will build some immunity in them. When other things come, the immunity that is built up will fight it away. And suddenly, going to school mattered to me. Because you can be doing something not knowing that somebody who went to school knows more about it than you. No, is anybody hearing me here today? You thought you were protecting them. You are just putting them in danger. Many times, that's why we overparent. That's why your child is 20 years in university and you are seizing his phone so he can't call people. You are, is, is anybody hearing me? <laughs> you forget that he's about to get a job. It's about to move to youth service. It's about to leave your city. And then that's when you find out whether you really train him or not. So you can't be a perfect parent, but you can be a purposeful parent. Are you with me? You can be a priority parent. So you purposefully train your children in the way they will go. So that when they are old, they don't depart from it. In the first service, I told them that what you model is what you market. So to train your children, the first rule of training is the family must be a model family. So your children can pick things from your home. If you help me say yes. Your lifestyle, your relationships must show what your children can learn from. Second service, I'll be talking to you on Training is attention and instruction. Test service, I speak to them, and the blessing makes the difference. Today, we're doing only three services, so we go. You know, the primary influence on a child is parental. The primary influence. A baby of one month crying now, and you talk, and the mother talks, the baby knows the mother. Huh? The primary influence is parental. So in raising children, children are picking from us from the beginning of their lives. And I say to you again and again, if you don't train them, don't blame them. So you have to begin early training them. 
Are you with me? That place I read for you, Proverbs 22, verse 6. The word train from the Hebrew word chanak means to introduce and to dedicate. Introduce and dedicate. And then the way he should go is the word derek, D E R E K. It simply means journey or road. So he said, introduce and dedicate the child to the journey or road he is meant to take. And when he's old, he won't be far from. That's what you're supposed to do. Introduce them and dedicate them to that road, to that journey, to that purpose to which their life is crafted. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? So training is not a hands-off thing. It's something you must engage in. It's an intentional commitment. It's something you tell yourself, I'm involved in this child's life. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 7. Look at what God told Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 7. He said, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. This doesn't look like something that you have a break time. Are you here? It doesn't look like training your children as a break time. He says you shall teach them diligently. You shall talk of them when thou sittest in their house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, when thou risest up. Anywhere you are, training is going on for your children. I speak over you now. The grace to make your home a testimony. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I say receive it in the name of Jesus. And one of the reasons why we want two parents in every home is so that there will be adequate attention given to the children and balanced training given to the children. Single parenting is not God's best plan. It only happens when life happens. Somebody divorced or somebody died. But don't choose single parenting. God wants the mother and the father in the life of that child so that attention can be given to the child and there can be balance. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Some of us that work very hard, you need a wife that can stay at home and give more attention. And some of us, are you with me? Need husbands that can help do that. But beyond that, the husband and the wife has their different areas of strength. Is that true? That balance needs to come. So don't say it's my wife that trains. Don't say it's my husband that trains. All of us are needed. How do we train and instruct a child? First thing I want you to do is to guide them on spiritual experiences and moral principles. Guide them on spiritual experiences. Guide them on moral principles. One thing that my wife did when my children were just very tiny, that made a lot of difference for us is making sure that we prayed with them. She just got up and said, we have to pray for these children. They have to be filled with the Holy Ghost today. And then I think Mike was six years or seven that time. And uh, this one was this. Every one of them was toddlers. So, okay. That's a good thing to do. Explain what it means we're born again. Explain what it means we feel with the Holy Ghost. Explain how to receive it. Prayed for them. And all of them began talking in tongues. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's not too early. Start it. Let them have spiritual experiences. It helps them know that these things are real. Am I talking to somebody here today? Explain to your children what it means we're born again. Tell them what Jesus did in your life. And tell them what he can do in their lives. Don't leave it for church. Do it in your own house. Are they hearing me? Yes, sir. Uh, are they hearing me? Yes, sir. Let them understand what miracle is. Let them understand what vision is, what dreams are. Let them understand what encounters with God is. And let them learn to pursue it as children. Are you here? I like it when my children manifest things like that. I told you the story that really made me glad. My daughter was giving a testimony some time back about why she came to my office and then asked me that whatever spiritual gift I have, 
that she came for counseling. What is a counseling? I want to receive spiritual gift. Pray for me. And she came with a seed. And one of the results of that prayer was when she was in the house. And then she just had God give her the name of somebody. And told that this person will be coming to Genesis Cinema. Go there now. She told her mother, I'm going to Genesis Cinema. What are you going to? God sent me there. And she went to Genesis Cinema and stood there waiting for the person, a young man. People are coming from the cinema and she just stood there until somebody was coming. And she felt like approaching the person. That's the person. She has never met him before, never heard of him before. Walked up to the person and greeted the person. And then in a few minutes, she just called the name of the person. The person, how do you know me? Say, God gave me your name. And God told me to meet you here and to lead you to Christ. That looks crazy. But I think I like that. Do you like that? Yes. I pray today that as we are living here now, may they have experiences in your house. Amen. I didn't think you say that amen well. Amen. So you need to do that, not only teaching them on uh, spiritual experiences, but also moral principles. Let your children know that not everything out there is okay. Banning them from watching some things on TV is not enough. Explaining to them why is more important. Because if you just ban them, they will do it thinking that there is no implication. It's just they don't want you to catch them. Come on, are you with me? But when they understand why, why they don't play with another boy or a girl or whatever, when they understand that, when it comes to sexual things, why they don't watch some funny pornographic things, why they don't get into all the smoking and the drinking, why they shouldn't hang out with some funny friends, you explain to them why. And don't back off from explaining. Because what you are trying to avoid with them, they will meet it somewhere. Are you with me? When I was younger, I grew up in deeper life, and they told us not to watch TV. And we agreed. Until suddenly they brought TV and put it in our phone. Now all the things they were telling us not to watch. I don't know whether they will tell us not to hold phone again. Because everything we are not supposed to watch is coming into our phone without our effort. Come and talk to me. So now the problem is this. If you didn't have discipline and understanding... Preventing you from watching TV was a waste of time. Please talk to me. Yes, Not watching TV was a religious exercise. Watching TV with discernment is the right thing. TV was not the problem. The heart of man was the problem. I think I wasted my time. Do you understand me? So that's what we teach them. So help them to understand that. And you can't help them to understand that when you are living a wayward life. You have to model it. Number two, take time to help them develop life goals and social skills. That's how to train your children. Let them develop life goals. Let them develop social skills. Don't let your child finish secondary school without knowing what she wants to do with her life. What he wants to do with his life. Let them be people that are focused. Let them be people that are going somewhere. And don't just be the person imposing on them what they should be. Open to them the realities of life and let them make their choices based on where their bent is. Are you hearing me? But never allow them to take something that is just too casual. Challenge them to be great. Challenge them to go for greater things. Let them begin to go bigger. You may be living in a bacha, a shack. Take your children to big mansions. Don't be scared of taking them to where things are happening. Even if you are going to stay on the, in a 5,000 Naira hotel with your children, take them to Abuja, take them to Lagos from your village. Show them a city. Show them how people live in a higher place and challenge them to have a vision of greatness. If you have my voice, say yes. Yeah. Are you hearing me? I say to the pastors I mentor, I learned many years ago 
the most church pastors that came under my mentorship who grew up in churches that never grew beyond 200 members find it difficult to build a church that crosses 200. They have never seen where something big was done before. You are not hearing. And even when you are teaching them, they are still defaulting to the things that they were doing. Do you know you can be hanging around greatness and not be able to do something that makes people great? Because you can spend, you, you know, you can hang around a church like this and spend your time criticizing. And not knowing that some things we are criticizing are things that are taking people higher. You can hang around politicians and they're making decisions that you are criticizing, not knowing is what is taking them higher. If you are dealing with a businessman or a woman and you see the person very purposeful, pursuing this, building a relationship, connecting, you say, ah, that girl, ah, and they do a shower, and that girl, and they do this, everywhere, 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 everywhere. Every. You don't know that those small, small things are what is making them rich. You'll be busy criticizing, not knowing that you don't have to sleep. You have to just be there. Am I talking to somebody here? To... You don't know what makes church, church. All you know is you came here, we gave you a sermon, you clap hand. But you didn't sit on the groundwork that made before your sermon happened. So you can be very highly anointed and start a church and nothing happens. And you see another person who doesn't look as highly anointed and every day church is growing. There are strategies that undergo, am I wasting my time? Same thing with wealth. That's why a boy that the father is very poor, that apprentice with a multi-millionaire businessman, give him time, you see him building millions. Ah? Huh? Even some of them that apprentice and they didn't settle them, give them time. They are thinking we produce wealth. Please talk to me. Because he has hung around greatness. Skills have opened up in him. Help your children have goals. Help them to have goals. Expose them to life. Change their thinking. Change their perspective of life. Don't let your child have mental poverty. Mental poverty is worse than financial poverty. Oh, is anybody hearing me here? For as he thinketh in his heart. Let him develop life goals. And then let him develop social skills. Somebody say social skills. If you are here, say yes. I told you when we are growing up. One of the things that almost hurt our lives was nobody wanted us to do social skills. They wanted us to run away from people. I don't associate much with people because that's how we are trained. When we are in my former church, I've told you where I came from and all of that. They make sure you don't relate with sinners. You're not hearing me. If you have my voice, say yes. You don't interact much with people and all of that. You just avoid... Uh, any area where people, what I'm saying, is that true? Yes, you will not be seen in family meeting. You will not be seen in village meeting. In the office, you don't join anything. Where people are going, you just stay away. You just want to be holiness unto the Lord. Is our watch. That is not the way to raise people. I'm not criticizing. I'm just teaching you. Anybody hearing me? That's not the way to raise people. They told us, you know, in the multitude of wars, wanted no sin. So you don't communicate. You don't converse. You just keep your mouth shut and you move away. Don't do that. Give your children social skills. There are a lot of young men here in church who don't know how to build a relationship. There are a lot of young girls who don't know how to build a relationship. And the moment they start relating with anybody, the next thing is they start sleeping. Because they think that relationship is just sex. They don't know what it means to gist and talk and think and know how to walk away from things that are wrong and right. They have no sense of control. Help them to build social skills. And there are some people that came out of families where every time there is an argument, there's a quarrel. Do you know their families like that? Do you know their families like that? Every time there's a quarrel, the man is shouting, the wife is shouting, everybody's banging on their door and screaming and all that. These children grew up with anger as their social skill. They grew up cursing with bitterness. That's all they know. Do you know there are some families where the man doesn't forgive, the wife doesn't forgive? The children grew up with that. I told you I was talking with my daughter, my first daughter, and then the other ones gathered. And I asked them, okay, you sit down. You report me now. I say, since you were born, you have graduated from university. 
Can you mention three times that I shouted on you from childhood until now? Can you remember three? Okay, can you remember three times you heard my voice raised in this house scream, shout? It's not because I'm perfect, it's because of a decision. And anybody can make that decision. Am I talking to somebody here? You don't raise a child by cursing and anger and bitterness and screaming. Hiya, you're not crazy now. If they heard my voice, say yes. yes. You can impose discipline without polluting the atmosphere. You can do it. People of God, you're looking at me quiet. Can I talk to you? Yes. That you are doing the wrong thing doesn't mean it's suddenly the right thing. Don't defend the wrong thing. Just learn a new way. Don't say, that's how they've been doing it. That's how they've been doing it. Don't learn a new way. You are not too old to learn new tricks. Learn. Lift your hand. May God give you wisdom. Amen. I did it. I say, may God give you wisdom. Amen. You can argue without quarreling, without being disagreeable, without being abusive. Learn that. God see. I told you when I got married newly, one of the things that my wife pushed me on was on please and thank you. I didn't have it in my vocabulary. Because from the way I came from, it wasn't an issue. Get me that thing. That's all. Because every time I always had one person or another serving in the house. So get me that thing. And you don't tell a house girl, please. And when they bring you, don't say thank you. It is their job. You are not hearing me. Now I got married and all of that. And we're about to eat. I said, okay, can I, I said, uh, can I have that? He said, say please. I said, where, where are you coming from? <laughs> the thing said, this is not Bodo Ibo. I better give me the thing. He said, I won't give you until you say please. And when you call it, he said, thank you. I said, see, training for Bushman. Are you still here? What do you see? Allowing myself to learn that changed my approach to things. And it's supposed to be you to receive that grace. Amen. I'm not planning to shout today. Are you catching something here? Yes, Let them be social. Let them be communication skills. You can communicate without shouting, without screaming. God see. Crisis management. Let them see you handle things, make decisions, and see how it's working. Let your children learn. The third thing to do, I told you training is attention and instruction. The third thing, give attention to the company and influences around your child. Give attention to the company and influences around your child. Children hide a lot of things. They hide a lot of things. But let me tell you one of the key indicators that your child is derailing. If you find out that one of the friends of your child is derailing, your child has derailed. Let me repeat that. If you find out that one of the friends of your child has derailed, your child has derailed. Not is about to. He has derailed. Don't say it's a friend. He's a friend. No, no, no. He has derailed. Bring him back in and walk on him. Because the influences around them. Do you know that peer pressure is a huge thing? Huh? That for children, belonging is more important than being right. Am I talking to somebody here today? They, they want to belong more than being right. So be careful. Peer pressure is important. So you check on the influences around them. Check on that association around them. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Once in a while, go through their laptop. Check on the things they have downloaded on their phone. You bought the phone. You shouldn't be afraid of looking at it. Are you with me? Oh, they're deleting things. You too, you're deleting. So you know how to look at, look at them too. You're not hearing me. Look at them. You know how to look at deleted things. Are you a child? Oh. The thing is, if you delete something, I want to look for it. I can't find it. Are you hearing me? Unless you have no savviness in the internet and all of that. There is nothing that you downloaded on that your phone that you watched. There's no text you typed that is not still floating in the air. 
There's none. You didn't know that. No matter when you deleted it, it's still up there. It can still be assessed. Oh, you didn't know that? Why do you think FBI and CIA can catch a man and look out through all your activities? You think all these criminals they catch that they've not deleted all the things? When they take it, that's when you find out that the people who put that phone there have skills you don't know. You are not hearing. He says, we are holding that phone now. Somebody can put on your phone and be listening to you right now while you are with the phone. And you are not aware that your phone is communicating with somebody. You are quiet. Are you with me? You can be making a call now and a friend has put something on the phone and is listening to your call. That's why when you call a politician, I say, calm down, calm down, calm down. Call me on WhatsApp. Because everything is talking. Somebody is recording it. That way. So be careful. Know what to do to catch your children quite quickly before they become a problem. If you're here, say yes. yes. Give attention to the influences around them, the music they listen to, the things they watch on TV. Give attention to that. And then finally, give them positive experiences and inspiration that will be with them for life. Give them positive experiences and inspiration that will be with them for life. Please, ma, don't let everything your children remember about the family be the suffering. Let there be something good they remember. No matter how bad things are, take them to one holiday in the village that will be a memorial. Prepare for it. Go with them. Take them to somewhere, Abuja, Lagos, outside Nigeria, that before your children get to 16, they can use that to remember you. Let there be something in the back of their mind that was a chop life experience. Something they can testify. Am I talking to somebody here today? It matters. Tell your neighbor it matters. You say, but my family is poor. That's why I'm telling you now. Give them something to remember you more than poverty. Hey, things are not working. That's why I'm telling you. Don't let their whole memory of you be things are not working. Give them something. If you had me say yes. Are you here? I walk a lot as a pastor. To go on holiday is a challenge. But I try my best. I, when my wife goes out with them, even if it's two days, I run in there, I hang out with them, I come back to be with you on Sunday. But whatever it is, give attention. Lift your right hand. The hand of God be upon you. In the name of Jesus. So the first question is, who are you releasing to the world? Are you sending them to be winners or sending them to be losers? The way you are preparing your children now, will they win or will they lose? You need to ask yourself that question. And if you are not preparing them, they've already lost. Oh, you know, I told you, uh, during the pandemic, at a time we had 23 children that stayed in my house. How many did I say? 23. Most of them were my son's friends, Mikael's friends. They packed everywhere. And those children can eat, eh? <laughs> you are not hearing me. They can't eat. One time, Michelle came to me and said, Daddy, you have to send them away. I'm tired of cooking. Before you finish the cooking, you can't even find the food. And they hung around and enjoyed themselves, played football, did basketball, swam. Every day they have uh, uh, billiards, uh, a snooker, then uh, table. They have something to play. Because... They had that in the house. So they were enjoying themselves. They finished. And they left. And then after again, they came again a few months back. And then one day early in the morning, I walked into my son's room. And I lay down with him on the bed. And I said, Mikkel, you know, I'm grateful to God that we're able to provide some things for you here. And you're enjoying yourself. And your friends come here and they feel comfortable. I said, but do you know one of the reasons why the children of rich people go down in life and the children of poor people go above them. I said, let me tell you why. I said, these are your friends who come here 
whose parents don't have this thing, as they are here now, they see it, they don't take it for granted. They are telling themselves, I must be rich. I must have this thing. So they work hard with everything in them. So that one day, they can provide something like this for their children. I say, but what rich people's children do is that they assume that these things will be there for life. So they want to ride on the basis that their father or mother can provide. And before long, those people they call poor will be ahead of them. I said, please, if you don't want these children tomorrow to be the people you are looking up to, get busy with your education, get busy with God, get busy with this. I talked, I finished, and all that. I was lying with him on the bed and talking. Why? Because it's how my father trained me. My father would wake me up before 4.35 o'clock, sit me down. I said, do you see all of this when you call your brother in America? You call this one, you call this one, you call this. He said, I'm telling you, none of them will help you. I said, I'm not cursing you. Just know that none of them will help you. Anybody that is not from your mother will not help you. Sit down here and study. And keep looking at only yourself. I said, if they help you, thank God. If they don't help you, no challenge. From the time I was a kid, I didn't have brother. I put it in my own mind that I won't ask for help from anybody connected to my father. I will fight until I rise. It was the madness I grew with from tatterhood. <laughs> Is anybody here? From tatterhood, I grew with that madness. And I told him. I left the room. I went back to my room and all that. While I was coming back later, I saw him in the library. What are you? I saw big books on his table. I said, <laughs> I said, I didn't say read all of them at once. But there was a charging up of his mentality. Is anybody hearing me here today? Charging up of his mentality. No, I'm not. I'm not. I, I must write my work this time. I said, but you're in class four. He said, no, I'm going to write. They said, no, you cannot register. He said, put me on, uh, what do you call it now? Which was this other one? Not GCA this. Neko, put me on Neko. I said, but you have not done this. He said, I will read it by myself. And I put him. And all the papers, B's and A's. Why? Because he made up his mind. I can't be down. I can't be down. It's your choice. If you don't prepare them for the world, they will fail. But you know one of the things you need to know is that after you have done your best, leave the rest for God. And if you have a child now that looks like he's walking away, calm down, he will walk back to God. Train up a child in the way he will go. And when he's old, he will not walk depart from it. And Isaiah 54 verse 13 says, All your children shall be taught of the Lord, and grace shall be the peace of your children. Are you hearing me here? And there are some of you that have children that are late bloomers. They are not doing well now. Calm down. They will still do well. Some of the children you taught are the best in life will not be the best too. Some of your children you taught are blockheads now are the ones who take care of the family. You are not hearing me. And this is where I have a problem with people who prioritize male children. I can tell you as a pastor, and as somebody who is a leader in society, in Nigeria today, most homes are being helped more by female children than male children. Shake across. Put your family, put other families. Prioritizing male children is nonsense. This is a generation where nobody returns home. Those male children will not come back to your compound. I have to beg my children. I have to keep telling my son, okay, I don't know. I hope you return here. <laughs> because one day I told him, I said, ah, they told me to buy a property in the village and all of that. And ah, can, ah, ah, can I buy it? And he said, for who? <laughs> I said, Mika, what are you saying? He said, for who? He said, who told you I'm going to live in the village? I said, ah. He said, turn the fire quenchy. <laughs> You see, these children are going to live in Canada, in Australia, in UK, 
in US, around the world, and they are not returning. Your brothers that travel didn't return. Their children, you don't know many of their children. Some of your children, we no go know them. Calm down and stop prioritizing male children. There is nothing like Ojoho. There's no Ojoho. You are not hearing me here. Nobody is going back to village. You are not handing a phone to anybody. <laughs> a chaotic thinking is killing you. So you born one, na girl. You say I was born two. You born two, na girl. You say I must born three. You born three, na girl. I must born four. You born four, na girl. I must born five. You born five, na girl. I must born six. You born six, na girl. I must born seven. You born seven. Now you almost born in twelve. Keep trying. But if you raise those gears well and make them champions, look at the lady in Adamawa. See how she flawed Ribadu and the rest of them and took the governorship. Flawed them. Powerful names. Just threw them on the ground and took the governorship candidature. And very soon now, some of them will win. And you see this one, governor, a female, governor, a female, governor, a female. Look across Nigeria. Stop talking nonsense and face reality. The world is a new place. Your grandfather world has changed. That's Rise to your feet and give the Lord a shout. Lift it higher than your head. I speak over you today by the masses of God. Your home will be a testimony of the goodness of God. Your home will be a testimony of the mercy of God. Your home will be a testimony of the glory of God. Lift up your hand and say, my father, today I rededicate my home to you. In the name of Jesus, my home will carry the honor of heaven. I rededicate my heart in the Parasiteco, Rita Tata Parat, Rita Canabato, Sita Patarota, in Codo Patarada, Sita Parete, Equate de Coparada, Sita Catata Catata, shout Amen. Amen. Grab your neighbor's hand on the right and on the left. Move closer to somebody. Grab on the right on the left. Lift your neighbor's hand. Everywhere you are. Let me hear you say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every family. Every Representing in gateway. That is having crisis. Let the crisis die. Every, every family. In financial crisis. In childbearing crisis. Let the crisis die. Open your mouth and pray. Sumeria, Requata, Dada, Requata, Cosa, Ecaparada, Sikapa, Retopa, Tecato, Isoperada, let the crisis, let the crisis end. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. God says, All your children shall be taught of the Lord. That means it's assuming you have children. He said, Touch shall the man be blessed that fears the Lord. Say, His children like olive trees round right about his garden. Grab your neighbors and in Gateway Church. Nobody will be childless. Amen. The power of miscarriage break. Amen. The power of delay break. Amen. By this time next year, they will come with triples and tails and twins. Open your mouth and pray right now. Let the power of God come. Can your amen be like thunder? Amen. God is faithful. Faithful God. I say God is faithful. Faithful God. While you are holding the hand, we're going to decree that our children will be first class children. No child die premature. Amen. None will be bewitched. Amen. None will carry evil character. Amen. All 
all of them will fulfill destiny. Hey. Open your mouth and pray for our children. Hey. First class children. First class children. Zach. Thank you, if I hear your amen, let it be done for you. Now, if you are here today, you have not given your life to Jesus. I want you to know, please don't sit down yet. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. He died for you. And he's going to give you the grace to live for him and empower you for destiny greatness. That's why he came to Calvary, to make sure you don't go to hell. I want you to lay your hand on your chest and pray with me if you want to give your heart to him. Or if you are born again and you backslid and you are bound by an addiction to smoking, to drinking, to lesbianism, homosexuality, to pornography, to gambling, to whatever, and you need Jesus to break that drug habit or whatever, you also pray with me and say, Jesus, I know you are the son of God and you died for me. Forgive my sin. Take over my life. Make me new. Amen. If you pray that prayer, it will be my honor to welcome you and to be a blessing to you. If you are like that, I want you to come to the altar now. While that coming, every other person, please lift your hand. I speak over you today. I receive. That the blessing of God rests on your home. Amen. You pray the prayer to give your life to Jesus. Please move fast. I speak over you. I receive. That there will be no darkness and shame in your home. Amen. Everything that made your life dark, I command it to clear. Now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The grace of God will define you. Amen. You will see help in the land of the living. Amen. Your children shall be taught of the Lord. Amen. They will be great in the land of the living. Amen. You will have joy in your generation. Amen. I bless you. Amen. Newness of life. Newness of grace. Amen. Addictions and bondages broken. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a clap as you get sick. We have a few things to do before we close. I told you today we'll be rededicating marriages. Is that true? Anybody here who got set for that rededication and you came with your, you gave your life to Jesus? Come, 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 come. Okay, you were outside. Okay, in the gallery, come. I bless you. The help of God be with you in Jesus. And please go this way. Uh, every one of you that is hearing me, if you came here to renew your vows and you came with your spouse, please stand up. Well, I think we can accommodate you on the altar. So if you are like that, please make sure you don't leave your phone or anything important to anybody unless somebody you trust. But if you are coming, you can carry them. Walk down here and stand with your spouse very fast. We can accommodate you. Musicians, come on, say something. Stand there and hold the hand and face the person. Young man, you are here alone. Okay. Please make sure you are coming with somebody. You can't renew it alone. There's no one fighting, it's two fighting. <laughs> Church, keep them, celebrate them as they come. We are grateful to God for every one of you. We thank God for keeping you. We thank God for helping you. Where is my wife? She's looking like the sweet 16. Yeah, two, two. Love it, love it, love it, love it. You are free to sing.
Are you move faster? We, 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 we don't have all the time. Amen. It's, it's, it's already 20 minutes to that. They know that they can dance it at home. Let's get into the kingdom. If you are hearing my voice, say yes. I'm glad that all of you are here. And I trust the Lord that you are home. We'll be the best after today. We are not rededicating our marriages and renewing our vows because something is wrong. We are doing it because something is right. Come on, are you with me? Something that is working, you make it work better. Are you with me? And I trust the Holy Ghost that from today all things become new. Revelation 21 verse 6, he said, Behold, I make all things new. He said, He that seated on the throne says, I said, This is faithful and true. As you live here now, your home be new. In the name of Jesus. Well, let me start with the man. Uh, while you are holding your wife's hand, look her in the eye. What is happening? You are over sweating. You can use this. Praise the Lord. Okay, so you call her by her name, Manuela. Now say with me, I love you. On our wedding day, I made a love commitment. Please, let me finish. With that. I made a love commitment to you. And today, I stand before God and his church to reaffirm that commitment. I am grateful to God that our home has endured. I celebrate you for the treasure that you are to me. I also repent of every failure through these years. My wife, today, as we make a fresh start, I renew my vows to God and to you. I will love you, honor you, serve you, keep myself to you, and live with you the rest of my life. In Jesus Christ's name. And everyone say the amen. amen. Okay. Manuela. I didn't have time to say her own. I was leading you to say your own. So everything I said, I concur. <laughs> Give the Lord a beautiful clap of. Okay, it's time for the wife. Look him in the face, please, and say the name. Call his, please, this is not a game. This is a vow. This is a commitment. Call the name of your husband and say, I love you. On our wedding day, I made a vow, a love commitment to you. And today, I stand before God and his church to reaffirm that commitment. I am grateful to God that our home has endured. I celebrate you for the treasure that you add to me. I also repent of every failure through these years. My husband, today, as we make a fresh start, I renew my vows to God and to you. I will love you, honor you, serve you, keep myself to you, and live with you the rest of my life. In Jesus Christ's name. And everyone said amen. amen. Let the whole church stretch their hands toward them. You can hold your wife close to you. You can give her a hug while we pray. Stretch your hand toward them. And begin to pray for your spouse. Everybody pray for the people here. God keep their homes. God bless their homes. Fruitful, God make this enduring. Open your mouth and speak in the name of the Lord. Husband, pray for your wife. Why pray for your husband? No devil comes between you, no hand of hell comes between you, no power of darkness defeats you. The union we walk, let it be fruitful, let it multiply, let it carry the banner of grace. And everyone in the house shout, Amen. Now all of you,
just hold your hands, just one hand together, and then stretch the other hand toward us on the altar. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says two are better than one. You are Lord from today, become better. He blessed them. He said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it and have dominion. I speak into your life in the name that's above every name. You will go and be fruitful. Every area of your life will have result. Every area of your life will have proofs of the faithfulness of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, dominate your world. Take charge everywhere you are found. Business rise, career rise, children take leadership in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak into you that you are seen be mighty upon the earth. I speak into you, nothing you pursue will fail. I speak into you, you will not carry shame, you will not carry darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak into you, the fullness of God's agenda for your home shall be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ you will not die prematurely Amen. this home will last unto a good old age Amen. the best of God is your portion Amen. go and succeed Amen. in the name of the Father of the Son and of the Holy Ghost we rededicate your marriage give the Lord a mighty clap you're free to get back to your seat. Oh, you have not given her a kiss. Ah, wait, wait, wait. Why are you are singing? Wait, wait, wait. The kiss is not a peck on the head. Look at it. Oh, Papa. Hey. Oh, yeah, you can try your own now. Yeah. Right. Jesus. They didn't shout amen well. Well, today, while still excited, and please don't forget next Sunday evening is our new wine for couples dinner. Everyone that is married here, don't forget I invite your friends. There are some senior boys in this house and some senior girls in this house. Ndichiri chichi. You are not hearing me. Are you hearing me here? They've been married now for more than 20 years. Some of them have been married for a little longer than that. Now, many of you told us you are going to be in the second service. Those for third service, we're not calling you out now. So if you didn't get your name here, if you dedicated third service and you decide to come for second service, you may have to re-indicate. Uh, well, let me start with, uh, I think they can stand there for the picture. Let me start with uh, Pastor and Mrs. Fever Bosa. Move quickly. They have been married for 25 years. You are both hands, both of you. Hey. God bless you. Okay. Mr. and Mrs., Pastor and Mrs. David Adeleke, they've also been married for 25 years. <laughs> Celebrate them as they come. faster stand there so that you can take a good picture for those who are taking that okay God bless you they've been married for 25 years you are free to move his royal majesty God bless you 
King McLean Mo'obo and the lovely Her Royal Majesty. They have been married for 37 years. Please come. This one deserves a salute. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations. Congratulations. God bless you. Okay, we can allow them go for time's sake. Please let the picture be very quick. We don't have all the time. God bless you. Dr. and Mrs. Ngia Matthew Nafo. They are junior. They've been married for 23 years. Help me celebrate them. While they are coming, Mr. and Mrs. Azor Gochindo, can they start coming? They've been married for 27 years. Mr. and Mrs. Festus G. Abelo. They've been married for 25 years. Let them start coming too. You have been married for 27 years. And you are looking tata ish like this. Whatever you are eating, you better tell me. God bless you. Congratulations. Please go on. Mr. and Mrs. Abelo. Help me celebrate them. They've been married for 25 years. Mr. and Mrs. Godwill Atoloma. Another senior boy. They've been married for 34 years. Help me celebrate them. And the wife is still looking under 21. You are welcome. God bless you. Mr. and Mrs. Chris Nicholas, they've been married for 21 years. While they're here, Mr. and Mrs. Chile Duanya will marry for 23 years. Please move quickly. Celebrate them, celebrate them. Where are they? Are they around so we can know whether to wait? Okay. Mr. and Mrs. God Power, we are another senior boy. They've been married for 36 years. Stephen Oluakerele, another senior boy. Let's make them welcome. They've been married for 33 years. Well, while they're coming, Dickon and Dickoness, Austin and Yerkere, a little bit junior, they've been married for 25 years. Help me welcome them. Well done there, Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Wongo, Little B Junior, 23 years. Help me welcome them. Let them come. And then we have another senior boy. Mr. and Mrs. Valentine in Kikin Diggy them. They've been married for 37 years. We are at them. They're not in church. I've not seen them. Okay. We wait for them in the third service. Mr. and Mrs. Allison Iweso. Can they come quickly? Where they come? Mr. and Mrs. Austin Arisuku. Keep coming. You are welcome. 
You are looking like under 21. How many years have you been married? 28. 28. 28 years. Can you help me celebrate them? Move fast. And while well, Austin is here, evangelist and pastor, pastor and evangelist happiness, Daniel, can you come pick me? How many years have you been married? 33 years. Help me celebrate and congratulations. Is it because you didn't put your age there? We didn't respect you as a senior boy concerned. Mr. and Mrs. Happiness, Daniel, give to them. God bless you. How many years? 27 years. Come on, help me celebrate them. Glory to God. Help me, church, celebrate them everywhere. Amen. And I want to take our tithes and our offerings, everyone here. I want you to know that we honor God in this church. And everyone that honors covenant pays tithes. I believe you honor covenant. This year you made a vow to God to never miss on your tithing and never miss on Bible study. And many of you have kept it 100%. Some of you have broken once and again, but you have returned back to God to honor him. And God will honor you. And many times when you make a vow like that, God doesn't give you a testimony immediately. He watches to see whether you'll be faithful. Because when God proves a man, he approves that man. Please make sure you are keeping your vow with God. Everyone paying their tithes, come to the altar of God now. If you are transferring, transfer. If you pay with an ATM card, go to a red foyer over there. God is waiting for you. Now, those of you who came to this service and you didn't have the opportunity of giving a testimony, go there now and give your testimony. One of the ways to short circuit your destiny is to stop testifying of the little mercies of God. Make sure you honor God with your testimony now. Everybody lift up your offerings to the Lord. Higher than your head with your two hands. People ask, pastors, do they pay tight? I paid before coming. I gave offering before coming. You do your own. Lift your own. Now, my God and my King, let the blessing rest upon your people. Let everyone's business and career rise. Let destiny shift forward. No one works poor in this house. No one die the death of the wicked. The best of God is your portion. In Jesus name. Amen. Very quickly. Third service, we're going to take about 15 minutes of your time. So, help us by hanging on for a few more minutes. Everyone hearing my voice, sir, I hear you, sir. Please don't forget that this evening by 4 p.m. we'll be having the U40 hangout for under 40. And it's going to be a massive, massive dinner. Please invite all your friends. It's going to be a very brutal meeting. And next Sunday will be very, very brutal for under 40. Believe me, the teaching of next Sunday, they will hear it around the world. You didn't hear me. It is not a religious teaching at all. Next Sunday, I'll be dealing with how to recognize a player. You didn't hear me. It will be a very brutal preaching. Because many, <laughs> many of you young people, they don't play you like football. And those of you that come in tonight, you see, one very uh, stubborn boy, Thought he was going to yearize me because he's a Liverpool fan. He thought Liverpool was going to win. So he said, this Sunday will be, come wearing your t-shirt. He didn't know I was praying against Liverpool. <laughs> when you see him asking how far. <laughs> Hello. Are you, those of you that are young people here, you are coming this night. Please come, let's enjoy the meeting and let's celebrate God. Now, please don't forget from tomorrow, Monday, until next week, Friday, 
I will be with you every morning, apart from Saturday and Sunday, 6.30 to 7.30, on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and even WhatsApp. It will be an impartation. We call it 12 Days of the Supernatural. It's, there's no physical meeting for that morning online. If you miss it, if you miss it, you will have a lot of regrets. Please get your data and tell your friends, 12 days of the supernatural. It will be something explosive from tomorrow. And different guest ministers also will be part of it and all of that. We're going to have great, great move of God by the power of the Holy Ghost. So please be there. And on Wednesday in the evening, 5 p.m., Dawson Oyeka will be leading us in worship here. Invite your friends. One hour, he will be on this stage leading us in worship. Don't forget, Wednesday is the first of June, right? Ah? Huh? And we want to make sure there's no carryover to July. Because July, there will be new prayer points. I can't hear your amen. So first, second, and third is our God first days. Make sure you don't miss them. This church is built on the God first covenant. And you must be there first three days of the month. First, second, and third. First day is worship and wonders. Second day is uh, word and wonders. Third day is warfare and wonders. We want you to be there and God will do a new thing in your life in Jesus' name. Uh, and uh, on that same Wednesday, my next single, Ezichimo, will be dropping that day. So please, you join us and enjoy it. Okay, next Sunday, we'll resume our five services normally. And next Sunday, we'll call it Vision Sunday. I will be praying over whatever you call your life vision on Sunday. Write them down. Come with them. We're going to have a beautiful time. Couples, collect your card for next Sunday evening. It's called the New Wine Day. And I'll be ministering to you with my wife and a few other persons. Please get your June Power seed. And don't forget that Impact Ministers Mentoring Outreach. The ministers meeting I hold is going to be here next week. Some of the great men of God you've been celebrating online and you've been meeting. Yemi Davis, Godman, Akin, Labi, Chris, Sugo, Jerry, Zebolaji, Dowisa, Moye, and myself and Manuela will be ministering. Don't miss any day of it if you can. It will be an impartation meeting and a teaching meeting. Invite every pastor, businessman, leader in any field. Let them hear something that will shoot them forward. Somebody hearing me, sir, I hear you, sir. Today is your first day in Gateway. Let me see your hand up. First day in Gateway. First day. Carry your bag and Bible. Come, let me shake your hand. Let me have the privilege. You have one minute to do that. Now move. Let me have the Come this way. I bless you. God give you destiny speed. And make you a testimony. Please go this way. Celebrate them for me. You are blessed. Celebrate them. Move now. Up, down, outside, gallery, move now. This way.